Hi, welcome back to Grains and Small Places. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a soft flour tortilla with fresh milled flour. So let's get started. If you're interested in checking out, I made a video previously that has a whole bunch of different methods and different recipes for flour tortillas with fresh milled flour. So if you want to check that out, I will try to put a link here or put it in the description box for you. Okay, so for this perfect soft flour tortilla, we're starting with some fresh milled flour. I am going to reveal that I chose hard white and kamut. <laughs> a mix of half and half seemed to be about the best combination that I found and taste test wise, my family loved this combo. So I used half hard white and half kamut, about 120 grams each, which gave me about 240 grams total. As you can see, I'm weighing out the wheat berries here and I love to keep them in these little containers. These are like my everyday grain bins. Um, I can put a link below to the grain bins and my mill and all of the things that I use in this video and in the last video. If you caught that, that was me troubleshooting how I came up with this perfect flour tortilla recipe. When using fresh milled flour, things always are a little bit different. So I learned some things in the last week or so while I was making all of these and this ended up being my favorite. I went ahead and added a teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of vinegar to my milk. Now, if you had buttermilk, that would probably work pretty well also, but I went ahead and put all these together in the milk so I could heat them up together. I did this while I was milling my flour. To my flour, I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and just mix it around with my hands. And then to this, I'm going to use three teaspoons or one tablespoon of olive oil. You can use whatever fat you want. This is what I had on hand. I know a lot of people like to make it with traditional lard. Sometimes lard is not always easy to come by. Um, as you know, we travel all around the United States and some areas like Texas, I can find lard, an entire shelf full of lard at the grocery store, the whole aisle. But in other areas, in the Northeast areas and things like that, it's a little bit harder to find. Sometimes it's only special order. So I'm going to go ahead and take this heated milk. I don't want to use cold milk here. I wanted to use the heated milk with the vinegar and the salt in it and just mixed it around a bit so that the salt dissolved in my liquid. And I'm pouring this into my fresh milled flour. I'm just kind of mixing it by hand. I suppose you could do this in a mixer or you could use the, like a dough whisk or something like that. You could also sub buttermilk for the milk and vinegar if you wanted to do that. I know this is kind of contrary to some of the other recipes out there, but if you saw my last video, I tested it out and taste test wise, browning wise, and all of the test points, the milk just worked better than the water for our family. Okay, so I really wanna get all of this incorporated, but I don't really wanna to have to start kneading yet because as you can see, it's pretty sticky on my fingers. So I wanna make sure there's no dry flour showing. And then we're going to just let this sit. Let it sit for about 10 minutes. It can You can let it sit longer than that if you need to, but let it sit for about 10 minutes for the flour to start absorbing all of the liquids. And we wanna make sure to cover it so that it doesn't dry out. Aren't these little covers so cute? I got those as a gift. Thank you so much for those. You know who you are. After the dough has sat for about 10 minutes or so, now I can start the kneading process. Now, when I was using some of the other flours that didn't form gluten very well, I noticed those were a little harder to work with and also harder to roll out and transfer to my pan. So that's why I kind of really liked this combination. The dough was so amazing to work with. And for kneading, it was also very soft and pliable. I just found this was just the perfect combination. If you like a little bit of a darker tortilla, you could sub the hard white out for hard red, pretty much the same amount. Um, I did try other things other than Kamut. I also tried spelt 
and soft white and the Kamut just seemed to really be the perfect texture that we were looking for. So I just want to knead this until the dough becomes a nice smooth ball. Not, I don't really want it to like rip and break apart. I want it to be very smooth. And you'll see the dough come together as you're working with it. And we don't want the dough to dry out. That is something that can cause our tortillas to have issues. So we want to make sure that the dough is wet, but not so sticky that it's coming off all of our all over our hands and the table and all of that. You can see the texture that I'm working with here. If you need to put a little bit of oil on your work surface or on your hands, that's fine too. And don't worry if I forgot to tell you one of the ingredients amounts or something like that, I will post a link in the description box below with this recipe. It's a printable recipe. You can print it off and have it for your records. It also has weight and volume. So whichever way you prefer to cook, it's on there both ways. After I'm done kneading this and it's all a smooth ball and when I put my finger on it, it should be very soft. It should not be stiff, dry, or hard. I'm going to put it back into my bowl, but I want to take some oil and just rub it around in the bowl so that it doesn't stick to it and it keeps this outer surface of my dough wet. So just going to grab some oil, put it in my bowl, cover it right back up, and I'm going to let it sit for another 10 minutes. All right, after that 10 minute resting period, I'm going to go ahead and start preheating my pan. As you can see, I'm using a cast iron pan here with my induction top. I really like using this because I can control the exact temperature that I want, but if you don't have an induction top, usually somewhere around medium is where you're gonna wanna keep the heat at. Just keep an eye on your tortillas. If they're too hot, they won't work out. And if it's too cold, it won't work out. But the most important thing is to make sure your pan is preheated. So when those tortillas hit that pan, they are exactly the temperature that you want them to be, not the pan is still heating up. So also make sure that you don't try to heat your pan up really quickly with an even higher temperature because then your pan will be a too hot of a temperature and it could scorch your tortillas. So I found that about 10 to 15 minutes beforehand for a cast iron pan was about the perfect preheating time. If you have a, just a regular pan, it may only take five minutes or so to preheat your pan. So with the dough, as you can see, I'm balling it up into maybe ping pong ball size. These make about eight inch tortillas. If you want those really large burrito tortillas, you could divide this up into eight segments instead of 10, and that'll give you like a 10 inch size burrito tortilla. If you want those really small taco ones, you could divide this dough up to even more. But as you can see, I've divided it up into 10. This gives me 10 eight inch flour tortillas. And as I'm rolling these balls around, I'm giving them a little bit of surface tension first, rolling them around and pinching the seams at the bottom. And then I'm just coating them each with just a little bit of oil to help keep them from drying out. And I'm just gonna do this with all 10 of the little balls. As I said, they're a little bit smaller than a golf ball, maybe a large ping pong somewhere in between there, but I just tried to divide it evenly into 10 pieces. After they're all balled up and all covered in oil, I'm going to just spritz them with just a little bit of water. Um, I don't want to drench them or make them soaking wet, but just a little water in here and then cover it again for 10 more minutes while our pan is preheating. I just want to get a close up of my pan here. You can see just a little bit of smoke coming off. We don't want it to be huge billows of smoke or anything like that. Just a little bit of smoke coming off is what you want to see and these dough balls now have been resting for about 10 minutes or so. You wanna make sure that you have something to put them in when you're done cooking them. Immediately put them in here with a cloth and cover them. That is a very important step here. It helps keep the tortillas from drying out and it keeps that moisture in them so that they remain soft. If you just put them on a plate or something and don't cover them up right after they're being cooked, then you're probably gonna have stiff or dry tortillas. So I'm hand rolling these. If you have a tortilla press, of course you could use that. Um, I like to hand roll to have a little bit of control. Plus, if you watched one of my very beginning videos that I put out, I don't know, a year ago or so, we made sourdough tortillas and we had a tortilla press. 
And during that filming, that tortilla press broke. <laughs> so ever since then, I've just had to hand roll them. Now this little hand roller here, which I can also link below, but it comes in pretty handy. I can control it to make them somewhat of a round shape. Some obviously look better than others. Some of them don't look quite as round, but all in all, if I took just a little bit of time, I could get them pretty well circular. Before I start rolling them out, I just wanna press them out a little bit with my hand. While you're rolling them out, you wanna make sure to lift them off the mat a few times here and there to make sure that they don't stick to the mat or your working surface. This mat makes it really nice. I can see what size I'm getting. The dough doesn't stick to the mat. It comes off and releases pretty easy and it makes for a nice, easy cleanup. So as you can see, when I put the tortillas in the pan, almost immediately we get a little bit of a bubbling action. That's how I know my pan was preheated perfectly. If it was not heated enough, I probably wouldn't get the bubbles. If it was way too hot, I probably would have gotten smoke and it would have burnt pretty much immediately. Some of my tortillas bubbled more than others, but all in all, this batch had some pretty nice bubbleage. <laughs> I cooked the tortillas for about 30 to 40 minutes on the first side, and then I flipped them over and cooked them for another 30 to 40 minutes. I just kind of used my instincts and watched them. I kind of peeked a few times to see if the spots on the bottom side were browning yet. If I didn't get that brown color that I wanted, sometimes I flipped it back over to the front again to get just a little bit of that toasty little bubbles. <laughs> I really like that part of the tortillas. So as you can see, I just laid this tortilla over the bowl here. I found that this was an amazing discovery, just a great method. I didn't do it with any of the other batches that I made in the previous video. This is the only batch that I did it with, and I'm not sure if it had anything to do with it or not, but I watched some authentic tortilla making <laughs> videos and things like that. Just did a lot of research, and I just saw this little discovery where they rolled them all out, and then they just lightly laid them over their bowl, and then they cooked them. And the ones that I laid over my bowl, I don't know if they just had the perfect amount of moisture and they dried out just right. So when then they hit the pan, they just really bubbled up amazingly, but I got some really good puffing going on the ones that I ended up laying over the edge of my bowl. So I think I will go ahead and use this method in the future. Now, if I had laid them over my bowl when I used all soft white, I think they would have stretched and torn. So the Kamut and the hard white give it a little bit of strength and an oomph, I guess, <laughs> for the tortillas so that they could stand up to a little bit of this rolling and throwing them all around abuse, I guess you could say. I wanna get a close up here so you can see that action, but you can see the nice bubbles here. And then when I flip them, they get bubbles again on the other side. I just really enjoyed this batch and if you didn't see my previous video, this is batch number five. So I made 50 tortillas, five batches of 10 each, and they were all a little bit different so I could come up with the best recipe with fresh milled flour. Now, if you're making these with regular white flour, your method may be slightly different. You may get a little bit different results because with the white flour, it's a little bit easier to make some products. When you're using fresh milled flour, you're having to deal with the bran and the germ of the wheat berry. And this is actually good because this is where all the nutrients are stored in the wheat berry. So in this fresh milled flour, we're retaining all the nutrients for our body. 40 out of the 44 nutrients that humans need to survive are in the little tiny wheat berry. So you can see I'm putting them right here in my bowl and covering them with this cloth and keeping them covered. This is an important step. I used to try to skip, but I do not recommend skipping it because it keeps them nice and soft. When working with fresh milled flour, all the recipes are just a little bit different. So if you're a beginner to it, I'd recommend looking for recipes that are written strictly for fresh milled flour. And then once you master a recipe, you can play with it and then you'll be able to see how it works and how it differs and all of the different things and the beauty behind using fresh milled flour. Some people, I think, try to make one recipe and then get frustrated and then they quit because they didn't like the results. Other people will try to make 
really advanced recipes at first because they used to be able to make them perfectly fine with white flour and then it can be a bit discouraging so if you find one recipe and you just work with that recipe until you perfect it and then you start just making little changes then you start to learn a little bit how fresh milk flour works and how it reacts to things it's all a little bit different even if you've been baking for 50 years i've had many people tell me that they've been baking since they were a child and now all of a sudden they're not able to get good baked goods. I promise you it is possible to get wonderful baked goods with fresh milled flour. In fact, most people tend to prefer the fresh milled flour flavor that it gives as long as the recipe was followed correctly and you're getting the textures that you're wanting. Look how beautifully they puff up. It's kind of mesmerizing to just watch those little bubbles form. But I just want to keep giving you some close-ups so you can see. Um, I did have to speed some of this up so you weren't just staring at the pan for 40 seconds every time I flipped it. So this is not all in real time. I just wanted to make note of that so it's not like I'm throwing these tortillas on there, leaving them for one second, flipping them and then getting the results. Um, I did have to speed this up just so that the video wasn't an hour long. And this is my last one. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and cover all of these tortillas with this towel here but I wanted to show you just how soft they ended up. Even all the ones at the bottom are still very soft. I won't have any problems rolling up a taco. I can fold this and roll it into a ball and pull it back out and it's still nice and pliable and soft. I filmed this video about five or six days ago and like I said, I made 50 of these soft tortillas and I probably only have about 15 left. I did store some in the freezer because they only last a day or two in the fridge before they start to go stale. So what I like to do is take some parchment paper and just cut them into little squares so that I can put some parchment paper in between each tortilla. That way they don't stick together in the freezer. And then I just pop them in a freezer safe bag and put them in the freezer. They'll last in the freezer gosh, probably six months, maybe even up to a year. And to thaw them out, I just pull them out and it really only takes about 15 minutes for them to thaw out. But generally, our family will pop them in the microwave to warm them up anyways, to melt our cheese or whatever fixings we're putting in our tortillas. We love to use these for quesadillas. We love to use these for tacos, for burritos. We like to make flautas, which I do have an earlier video on that. That's the one I was talking about that I broke my tortilla press on. Um, we also, my son likes to turn these into little pizzas. So he'll put a little bit of pizza sauce and some mozzarella cheese, throw them in the toaster oven, and he'll have himself a little mini pizza. We just kind of try to get a little bit creative with these and they can be used for all sorts of uses. They're also really good with butter and cinnamon and sugar. It's kind of like a play on the elephant ear fair food. If you've ever had one of those, they're really good. But since I only have about 15 of these left, Left, it looks like I'm in to make another batch. I haven't made these in a while and I don't know why, but I haven't made them in so long that they just got eaten up really quick. And I think this week later we're having a different kind of taco. Last week we had like a shredded barbecue pork taco. So it was more like a Texas style. We had had some cabbage and coleslaw and cheese and put that in there. And then this week I think we'll just have like a traditional ground beef taco so we can just change it up a bit. I'm just going to pop this into my freezer. That way I will have plenty in the future. And next time we want some, we can just grab one or two out or we can grab a whole stack of them out depending on how many people are going to be eating them. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And I don't want you to be intimidated to try tortillas. The more you make, the better you get. I'm living proof of that. So the best way to improve is to go ahead and get started. I've already given you a head start with the best recipe that I came up with. So thanks for stopping by Grains and Small Places. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.